Benefits of Java EE Here we will discuss about a few benefits of the Java EE platform. The first one is simplified architecture and development. We all know that Java EE is based on Java, so it offers portability, i.e. write once, run anywhere property. We are using a multi-tier architecture which makes development of applications a lot easier. Next one is scalability to meet the various demands. Through the use of Java EE containers like Web and EJB, they provide additional scalability features such as database connections and lifecycle management, etc. Next, capability of controlling existing systems. Java and Java EE provide a number of industry standard APIs for accessing EIS such as JDBC API, Java Transaction API and JNDI. JDBC API is used to connect to relational data sources or a database. Java Transaction API provides Java transaction interfaces to access EIS resources. DI, or Java Naming and Directory Interface, is used to look up and find locations of components located on different servers. Loosely Coupled Applications Applications developed using Java EE run on different servers across different networks, so the message transfer between the applications can be done by using JMS, Java Mail, API, and Java IDL. JMS, or Java Message Service, which is used for sending and receiving messages. Java Mail API, this is used to access mailing services. Java Information Definition Library, API, or IDL. We can define our components and its implementation details here. Choice of servers. We also have a lot of choice of Java EE servers to deploy our Java EE applications, such as iPlanet from Sun, IBM's WebSphere, BEA's WebLogic, etc. As we discussed earlier, more than 75 servers are available. Tools. We also have many tools for developing enterprise applications, i.e. IDE, Integrated Development Environment, such as Forte from Sun, Apps, and JBuilder, etc. Finally, Simplified, Unified, and Security Model. EE provides the security to authenticate and authorize the clients. We can use Java Authentication and Authorization Services, or JAAS, to provide a framework and APIs for authenticating the users and assigning the privileges. Here we have discussed the few major benefits of Java EE platform. There are a lot more benefits existing, but it's hard to explain and realize. So we will discuss while learning the particular concepts. Java EE Platform Services So far we have discussed the various application scenarios of Java EE and the application servers. Here we will discuss a few things about the platform services. Java EE Platform provides the various services to simplify the application programming. It also makes use of the resources available in the deployment environment to customize the applications at the deployment time. The various services provided by Java EE Platform are services, transaction services, deployment services, and security services. Let's look at each service in detail. Let's start with naming services. Java EE naming services provide the capability for the application clients to access the enterprise beans and web components. It also provides access to the naming environment through Java Naming and Directory Interface, JNDI. A naming environment is nothing really, but it does allow a component to be modified without the need to access or change the source code of that component. Such components can be located on any machine accessible from your network, but not necessarily the local workstation. Once a component has been implemented in the environment, it has a JNDI naming context. 
A real-world example for the naming service is a telephone directory, where we can store all the phone numbers with reference to the name and address. If we want a phone number, we can find out using the name itself. We can access these components using JNDI interfaces. If we want to use the component, it creates a JavaX naming initial context object and looks up the environment naming context in initial context under the name java colon comp forward slash env and retrieves the value. A component's naming environment is stored directly in the environment naming context or in any of its direct or indirect subcontexts. Java double E component can access only the objects named, system provided, and user defined. The names of system provided objects are stored in the environment naming context, Java colon comp forward slash env. It also allows the components to name the user defined objects, such as enterprise beans, environment entries, JDBC data source objects, and etc. We can also name an object within a, a subcontext of the naming environment according to the type of the object. For example, enterprise beans are named within the subcontext like this. Some of the commonly used naming services are shown here. Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, LDAP. Domain Name System, DNS. Novell Directory Services. NDS Network Information Service NIS I think now you have a clear idea about the naming service and its function. Let us now see something about the transaction services. Transaction Services Transaction divides an application into a series of indivisible units of work, i.e. system supports transaction it ensures that each unit will complete their work without any interference from the other processes. If the unit of work it was entirely completed, then it is saved. Otherwise, the system completely removes the work whatever the unit had performed. Transactions also simplify the application development because the application component providers are free from the complex issues of failure recovery and multi-user programming. There are certain characteristics provided by the Java Double E platform for transactions. They are Java Double E transactions are flat, i.e., a flat transaction cannot have any child transactions, i.e., we can't have any transactions inside a transaction. The Java Double E platform implicitly handles many transaction details, such as providing information specific to a particular transaction and managing among the multiple transaction managers. Let's look at accessing transactions. A JTA transaction is a transaction that can cover multiple components and resource managers. JTA transactions are created and managed using the javax.transaction.user transaction interface. The different types of components can access the user transaction objects in different ways. Let's see them. Let's start with Enterprise Beans. In this, JTA transactions are started automatically by their containers. Enterprise Beans that use the Bean Managed Transactions use the method ejbcontext.getUserTransaction to look up the user transaction object. Next, applets and application clients. They may or may not be able to access a user transaction object directly because it depends on the capabilities provided by the container. However, they can always invoke enterprise beans that use a user transaction object. And the final component is web components. They use JNDI to look up the user transaction object. Here, what we have discussed is the basics of transaction its characteristics, and accessing the transaction objects. Later in the course, we will analyze in detail about the web tier transactions, enterprise bean transactions, and JDBC transactions. We will discuss the remaining platform services in the upcoming lessons.